What's up, Foot Clan? It is championship uh, basking time. We're going to sit and talk about all the big performances for Week 17. And don't worry, you scoundrels with Week 18 title games, we've got you covered too in the waiver wire segment. You don't want to miss a minute of today's show. Make sure you subscribe. We're here all year long. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers. Feeling good. Feeling great. I've asked yeah. the producers yeah. to. <laughs> we are all feeling great. All three of us doing well. Happy yeah, to be with you. I did, oh, come on. There what is go. this nonsense? I did ask uh, Al Borland to uh, just bring bring a little something. Yeah, there something we go. I forgot this. Into the studio. Mm, you know, just Everyone here has got a trophy. That was mine last year. Put this right here. Yeah, yeah, Let's that's see. good. We got enough well, room. I think, I think there's room it's, over here. It's it's very large. Okay, yeah. congrats, okay. fellas. Let's just kind of one on each side of Jason here. <laughs> proud of you, proud of you guys. <laughs> I miss, I miss you guys. So Woo-wee! happy New Year, everybody! And what a New Year it is. The rain begins. <laughs> what do you? Okay, hey, hey, I can just, touch my plaques. Yeah, okay, Jason's finding his plaques on our trophies. That's fine. No other part of my trophy, though. Okay. <laughs> happy to report. That uh, after defeating the evil one, Josh, I did finish the job, took yeah, care of business. That is great. That is great news. Jason graciously handed me the trophy that he had won last year, which I received and then embraced. And then, well, we won't talk about anything else. <laughs> yeah, because private times. <laughs> but, but uh, and then Mike, Mike defeated me. Yeah. Quite handily in our dynasty league. Your your team did me a favor, and a few of the guys. Took the week off. I thought I could do it without CMC and Mostert. Oh and man, the Camara uh, and everybody else that got hurt. The first goal line opportunity for Christian McCaffrey was like, here we go, here we go here again. Here we yeah. go, get stuffed, and then the old trickarooski to Debo, and I was very pleased. And then two minutes later, oh, yeah, they were back on the goal line. Yeah. It's like, oh, you are gonna get yeah. wrecked. I knew I'm I'm happy for Mike. He has a uh, famous history of second place in our dynasty league. This is your first yep, title. My first first. Your first first. And um well Jason's here too, guys. Yeah. He's having a real <laughs> special time this morning. Mike and I are walking by each other saying, Hey champ. We're just congratulating our championships. Yeah, I'm happy for you, fellas. And Jason, it's been so long since you haven't really got to experience it, glory. It is my most <clears throat> My my most proud achievement is that since we started this show, we're in four main leagues, uh, a lot more, but f- there's four main leagues I actually care about, and we've been doing this nine years. And in those four, <laughs> in those nine years, I have this is the first time I do not have at least one championship, and it sucks. <laughs> I mean, it <laughs> sucks. I feel so bad. This is like. Well, oh, congratulations! Is, is the giant trophies making you feel inadequate? It just, it just maybe it needs to fuel me, make me hungry for okay. next year. There you go. You know, but instead I feel dead inside. <laughs> so, congrats to everybody out there that managed to win a Foot Clan title this season. We were, you know, on Twitter talking to so many of you. I jumped in the Discord this morning and uh, thanked everybody for a, for an awesome year. And obviously, there are some of you scoundrels i call them (laughs) that are in week 18 championship games and we're here all week long this is the final week of five shows or four shows i guess without new year's uh before we shift to two a week but we're a year-round podcast so do not go anywhere we'll be reflecting on the season we'll be looking to the future we've got um the footies are approaching the footy awards the nominee show coming up very very soon it's the greatest award in the history of humankind Mike, I uh, I don't know about you, but I went over to shopballers.com this weekend. Oh, I have not yet. And I purchased a championship shirt. Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe two of them. Okay. Maybe a mug as well. <laughs> I got them all. I wish they were here right now. Um, and 
Uh, so shopballers.com, lots of you have been grabbing those Why shirts. Why am I here today? <laughs> Honestly, you're su- superfluous. I, I should have just let you two run the You're entirely unnecessary show. today. We, Andy and I are we're pretty tired. Yeah, from all the celebrating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was New Year's and we were champs. I mean, Woo! 2024. Some, yeah, what's a great year. Um, and then if you need actual swag, which I've, I've also been here, uh, fantasychamps.com, we have a special promotion. You buy a trophy for your league, which you can get engraved with your name. You get a free individual championship ring. You just put the code free ring in, and you get a $59 championship ring for free with the purchase of a championship trophy or belt at fantasychamps.com so you can swag out. And a uh, couple other shout-outs, a couple champions to mention at yep. the top of the show. Um, we've got a Megalobowl winner. Oh. Oh. Congratulations to uh, – how do you pronounce that username there? What? Oh, Man. Caleb Ski. That is very loud celebration music. That is That, that was very loud. <laughs> oh, that feels uh, good. Andrews Jackson – Username Caleb Ski won the Megalo Bowl with 216.64 points. I thought you were confused on the pronunciation of Andrews Jackson. And no, like what? That's pretty it's, easy. It's Andrews, but uh, it's con- really close to your to your name. Congratulations! And uh, if you didn't hear us tease it earlier, we're going to be making some big improvements to the Megalo Bowl for next season as well. But how many entries? I mean, the, Andrews Jackson ended up a top. 20,000 20, people, 20,000 yeah. plus people. So you are the champ. I went back. I looked at his draft. It was excellent, uh, solid top to bottom. Had some of those, you know, surprise draft picks late. And um, I believe he had the Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews stack, thus the name Andrews Jackson. Uh, and then the Listener League champion was crowned, and it was not any of us, which no. means uh, MG Phil. Who, whose Maddie. name is Maddie? Congratulations! Took it home, and also, uh, I believe, Call sign Wilson. I believe she had the best record in the regular season too. Right? Yeah, she she was very good. Pure domination. <laughs> Great job! Great job, Maddie. <laughs> we'll see you back next year. Yeah. So uh, that's what we have here at the top. We're going to get into studs today. We're not going to focus a lot on the duds today. It's going to be the studs, the league winners. Tomorrow we'll have a chat about some disappointing players and what you view them as going forward. Follow the show all off season long at the FF Ballers on Twitter. And uh, let's talk some quick news before we get into the studs. News and notes from around the league presented by USAA Insurance. Well, this didn't help my attempt against Mike. Christian McCaffrey left early with a calf strain. You weren't here in the studio, Mike. Jason and I were here. What did I say, Jason, right before the injury with uh, Christian McCaffrey? Oh, this was unbelievable. It was so unbelievable. He he literally turns to me and says, I just love that Christian McCaffrey never leaves the field. I don't think Christian McCaffrey played anymore <laughs> after that. It was like he had like a snap and a half. Yeah, it was almost like the next snap he was gone. Elijah Mitchell was in there. He's not going to play in week 18. Devontae Smith, right ankle injury into the game, was on crutches and a boot. It's considered a minor ankle sprain, unlikely to play in week 18. Jaden Reed, two touchdowns, and then left with a chest injury, going to have more x-rays. He is or more tests. He is fantastic at two things. <laughs> like, do you really good at both? Do you being hurt and scoring, and scoring touchdowns. touchdowns? Do you believe my prophecy about him at this that point? That he will be the that best he's their player? best wide receiver. Uh yeah, I, I I think that's it's fair to say going into next year, Jaden Reed will be the player that you want. But it's. To me, I mean, it's Christian, the, it's like a lost season for Christian Watson. Watson is much more to me the pickings of the situation. Where where the, I think I think Jaden Reed will be the Deontay, the the finer, more involved player, or Watson can still be an explosive player. But that's just how I view. I, it. I think that's a really good comp. Uh, Jaden Reed showed a lot of skill this year. He looked great every time we watched it. It was like this this is a very good wide receiver, and he's got enough speed. Where even though he's the slot guy and you don't usually get the the top like for instance Deontay Johnson doesn't usually have high end finishes but Deontay Johnson doesn't quite have that same you know trick that Jaden Reed does with his speed so, ten touchdowns yeah I mean it, he had he was awesome this year 
All right, more injury news. Trevor Lawrence, hopeful to play in Week 18, dealing with the shoulder. Arthur Smith said Taylor Heineke is dealing with an injury. They don't know whether he's going to play. Mike Tomlin said Mason Rudolph will start again. Mike Tomlin, you old dog, you keep doing it. Now, their, <laughs> odds, their odds of making the playoffs are very low, very low, like 17%. Yeah, but with this roster, which is not that good, to still have a non-losing season is incredible. And this – which um, he's already accomplished, right? I yeah, mean, he's it's already, nine that's, and seven. that's a done deal. So, um, But with regards to Mason Rudolph, this is not – like Kenny Pickett is okay. This is – he's he's made the move to Mason Rudolph to keep things chugging along where they're going well. And then Alvin Kamara left early with a sprained ankle, another one of my dynasty running backs. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> disappointing. I know a lot of people were counting on him in the big week 17 title games. But he, uh, we don't have any more information on that injury. But, you know, we got one week left. Mm -hmm. Any other news you want to talk about, Brooksy? No, sir. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. One other thing I want to mention is we are going to get into all of the playoff scenario discussion tomorrow. So all the Week 18 playoff motivation, player incentives, all of those thoughts, we'll dig into that tomorrow. It should be an exciting final week. I mean, the, the headline there is like Buffalo wins their game. Mm. They are the division winner. Buffalo loses their game. The potential is that they're out of the playoffs. <laughs> that is uh, very all or nothing. Oh, man, that's amazing. All right, let's talk some studs. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Well, I thought I would read you the top 10 performers for week 17 to begin this segment. Number one was Lamar Jackson. Mm -hmm. Big time. Unbelievable performance. Number two, Jordan Love. Mm. Jordan Love. C.D. Lamb was three. He was awesome. Oh, man. Can't, who's got him in Dynasty? Devon, Jason can't speak on this show. It's really hard. He has nothing to say. Well, because it's just anger. It's, it's all just, bad. It's all bad. You, it all you say Lamar Jackson. Well, I was in two championships this last week. I played against Lamar in both. I don't, I'm not happy about that. You say, oh, Jordan Love was number two. Oh, it was a, one of those was a super flex. <laughs> Guess what? Two quarterbacks he had: Lamar Jackson and Jordan Love. I'm not. I'm just here to. I'm and then just we get to, to, but we got to Ceedee Lamb, and there's nothing bad you can say about. Yeah, he's great. I had him on my dynasty <laughs> league, double champs, until you two <laughs> fools convinced me to trade him away. How about this? Number Not four, again. twenty-one targets. Yeah, Devonte Adams. The pendulum came back. Yes, yes. So um, that if you want to know how my championship game went. I had Lamb and Adams as my starting two wide receivers. Uh, Kyler Murray, big game, beat Philly, ruined our draft pick. Way to go, Kyler. Kyron Williams, boy, what a season for Kyron. Yeah. Delivered all season long when he was healthy. He is going to be very fun to discuss in the offseason. Oh, uh, top I, 10 pick? Yeah, 100%. He's that's top that's 10 what pick. I mean. Like Immediately you go that, and then we're going to be – Rolling in that NFL draft, every time the Rams are on the board, you go, uh, uh, They got their guy. They got their guy, man. They, it, yeah, I mean, I think so. And then uh, Joe Flacco. Just, this <laughs> guy. And number seven. <laughs> oh. I mean, well, it was Come a on, really easy matchup, an obvious play um, against the Jets without, without your, your number one, wide, number receiver, one yeah. wide receiver. Justin Fields and DJ Moore at eight and nine. Oh, that stack that... Oh, man, that stack you created <laughs> would have won Josh the championship this week if he beat you. Oh, man, but he wasn't there. And then number 10, Isaiah Pacheco, back from injury and just running like a, uh, dude, like a cartoon dude. on every That's, single play. My takeaway from Pacheco is the uh, apparently the time off like rejuvenated his leg speed. This guy is, is, the, he is a dinosaur out there. He's just stomping. He I mean, very really fast, but destroying but, the ground. Yeah, he but hates he's, grass. He's also like on that one play where he he goes to the right yeah. sideline <laughs> and he and he and he like really gives it his all to just sprint. 
It's almost like he's doing high knees. It's just like, I'm, I'm pumping these legs so hard. Some guys glide. Like Arian Foster, when oh, he ran, yeah. it was just, it was smooth. You're like, how? I, I don't know how he's moving that fast. Pacheco, you understand how he's at the speed because he is giving everything he has into every single step. Stop. Every, stop. Every, every single stop. stop. Every takes. time he takes, uh, takes the ball, it's like he's trying to run faster than he ever has before. And I give him credit. He's like a jagged piece of glass out yeah. there. I mean, <laughs> in incredible. All right. So those were your top 10 performers for the week. But let's dig into each position and give credit where credit is due. Starting with, um, before I get into the week 17 performances, I just want to mention the top five quarterbacks for the playoff weeks. That was Lamar Jackson at 31 points a game. Jordan Love at 28 a game. Baker Mayfield at 27 Baker. a game. Joe Flacco, just under 27 a game, and Derek Carr. He did it. That's your top five from weeks 15 through 17. <laughs> well, at least Lamar Jackson is there. Wasn't Dak. Wasn't Josh Allen. Wasn't Patrick J Mahomes. Jalen Hurts. Wasn't Jalen Hurts. So, uh, you you know, we have a streaming quarterback segment all year long, and four-fifths of the top five quarterback performers were streamers. And, in and that we, category. we had some of those, Baker and Derek Carr, uh, this mm -hmm. last week, both. Uh, and I'm sorry, Joe. Sorry, I didn't believe. <laughs> so, Justin Fields had a big week 17 as well. In fact, he finished three of the last four weeks in the top four at the position. If they keep him, which... Did you see the, the crowd? No. no. The Chicago crowd chanting, we want Fields. Really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, he played a heck of a game, so the mob is going to be on your side. But they were, they were very vocal and letting Chicago know what they wanted. Chicago has made a vast improvement over the second half of the year. They have. Defensively, they've they've taken a step forward. And, you know, if you're if you're Chicago, it's tough. Because half of me is just like, you just got to take the shot at a new quarterback. Is The question that I would ask myself if I'm Chicago is, is Justin Fields legendary? And do you take the chance of hitching your wagon to Maybe a middle of the middle of the NFL quarterback versus going for the legendary ceiling. That's thought one, but then thought two is like, well, Justin Fields became much better when you added DJ Moore, and if you added Marvin Harrison in the draft, Marvin Harrison Jr. and DJ Moore, yeah, which they could. I mean, they're they have the number one pick, so they they can do the move that we were all as Cardinals fans hoping for. Of you look down the draft board, you go, oh hey Patriots, hey Washington, yeah. You well, sure Swapsky. you so sure need a quarterback, right? Well, give us give us a bunch of stuff, and then we're gonna take Marvin Harrison, which would be absurd. Think about the scenario for a dynasty manager of Justin Fields right now. Oh man, two outcomes. Outcome one: you don't know where he's quarterback. If he's a starter, option two: they add Marvin Harrison Jr. Those yeah. are the two outcomes. And if they do, then he is a. He's a top great fantasy asset going forward long term because that means they've committed to yes. him. They're yes. going to be too good to have you know another one of these top five picks, and his fantasy production will be off the chains. That's exactly right. So you have the possibility if if they add a Marvin Harrison Jr. to Justin Fields' team to the Bears, is he a top three pick at quarterback? Uh, I mean, I think he should be. It will be worth discussing. For sure. Yeah, I mean he's it, ahead of Mahomes. Yeah, it, it would you would have Hurts, Allen and Hurts first. Hurts, yeah, and there's the my second. two I was going with. Right, and then he number three is up for grabs. Yeah, he would be in that tier of what comes after those two guys. Uh, Kyler went for two thirty two and three in this game. In fact, he looked really good. Uh, the Cardinals dropped a couple spots in the draft because of beating the Eagles, <laughs> being the playoff bound Eagles. You realize the Cardinals with four wins. This year they beat Dallas and Philly. Those are two of their wins. Well, I mean, if coaching matters, you do have a coach who has some history with that division. I don't know if you heard me on Sunday Live, but I I did. I, I, yes. I basically said that I agreed that yeah. Arizona was going to be close in this game because Jonathan Gannon – I did, didn't want think they would win. I know. I know. At I one just, point, Andy's like, I oh, they're going to win. And I, I go, oh, they're making it close. They're not going to win. And then 10 minutes later, I was like, we're going to win this. Yeah, game, we just right? knew. <laughs> we knew where it was going. Did you see Josh Allen finished the season? He is now the number one quarterback. That's how he finished uh, the fantasy season, which means he's finished 1-1-2-1 the last four years. Josh Allen yeah. 
Wasn't uh, an amazing game. No passing touchdowns, two rushing. Fine. No Joe Flacco. <laughs> right. <laughs> he just kept running. <laughs> well, and dude, he missed digs on a big – I mean, that's another player we're going to talk about tomorrow. Diggs, Kelsey Mahomes, they're going to be brought yeah. up tomorrow. So, quick break. Coming back with some more studs to talk about at the running back position. All right, your playoff league winners at running back. The highest scores through weeks 15 through 17. Christian McCaffrey was number one. Well, that's that's kind of not fair. <laughs> yeah. That's how big his previous two weeks were, especially that uh, that first playoff week when Mike and I got McCaffrey out of yeah. the playoffs. Where was where was the <laughs> where was the calf McCaffrey uh, version? Nice. Kyron Williams was number two, twenty two and a half points a game. Brees Hall, number three at twenty point eight points per game. James Conner, number four at twenty point six points per game, and Jameer Gibbs was fifth. Which James Conner in that Philadelphia game, he was fantastic. He had he ran the gauntlet of fantasy football difficult matchups for the final four weeks mm -hmm. of the year, and finished as the running back five eleven five and three in that stretch. And he was so doggone good. I'm I'm so happy that James Conner was your start of the week this last week, encouraging people to like look. Force I know it's in there. I know it's a tough matchup, but. He's just been too good, and he was too yeah. good. The Eagles' great D-line, they could not stop him. Every single play was just a huge chunk, and then, and then of course, every third down, we would take him out and oh, we kept making fail fun to of pick that. it up. Yeah, yeah it's one-handed one catch for a touchdown, yeah. and yep. it's like, oh, that guy should probably – maybe Michael Carter shouldn't be out there, although Michael Carter had one run where he, he uh, dislocated he the ankles of the – Eagles defender James Conner people want to, know, want to know he's 28 years old and I'm curious your answer to this is he a keeper option for yeah, people he is absolutely a keeper option we uh Jonathan Gannon was asked the question point blank about oh the tell age, me about the age cliff and he said that there's some players like like James Conner some. that you bet on well I mean you you <laughs> you see it right now like the the play style of James Conner, right? It, it, it's almost more of a Marshawn Lynch type of uh, body capability. It's 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 a tough. It's really hard to tackle that guy. He's not some electric speedster that's going to lose a step and all of a sudden be uh, more difficult. He is a big, strong, tough runner. And so um, the point is, James Conner is already under contract for a lot of money. He has proven well, himself at the end of this year to be really, really good, and he, he has the support was, of his coaching staff. It was five a carry this year, just on just uh, under five a carry this year. And the the devil's advocate will say is he is a eight and a half million dollar dead or, or cap hit for next year. If they if they did move on, it's a three million dollar dead cap, so a savings of five for the team. And yes, he's under contract, but it, it's zero guaranteed. So. There could be a situation where they go back to the, the the contract room and say, "Can I just can I get something to make sure that uh, I have some guaranteed money this year?" But it will be that'll be a storyline to watch for the off season. What a finish for James Conner mm -hmm. and uh, Isaiah Pacheco! What a finish for him this year. You know, they just kept trusting Pacheco more and more in the offense. Clyde edwards helaire oh. didn't get his swan song. <sighs> that was upsetting. And Pacheco ran wild, 18 for 130. Was, look, Pacheco is a better runner and a better player than Clyde Edwards-Alaire. But that matchup, watching what Pacheco is doing, you just yeah, Clyde would have had himself a good game. Jerome Ford finished strong on Thursday night. Travis Etienne did what we hoped he would do. Two rushing touchdowns, including a big one in this game, and uh, first multi-touchdown game for him since week seven. So, if you survived his down couple of weeks, which I I don't know how many people did. Yeah, it's tough. And then this was this was uh, really the surprise of the week on the ground. Najee Harris and Jalen Warren, they ran wild against Seattle. Just eviscerated them. Uh, it looks like just under 200 total yards between the two. 
three rushing touchdowns between the two. They they really couldn't stop Najee. Every every play it was it was a very James Conner type of game where it was just like it just kept working. Every play was like wow he's he's getting an extra two yards past wherever he's touched. Brees Hall ends the year at RB six against all odds or against every obstacle I should say. <laughs> doesn't have a quarterback to threaten the secondaries. Doesn't have an offensive line, but he could catch the at ball. A recovering ACL all year long and. I will be very curious. Like, I was making fun of the Simeon offense. They were down two scores. It was dump, 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 dump. Uh-huh. I'm curious what a good, what a normal involvement will be. I, I would expect if I had to project it right now with Aaron Rodgers coming back next year that Brees Hall is still very active in the passing game, not to this degree, and way more efficient in the running game yes. than he was this year and very much in play as a top five option. I, I would agree across the board, but the involvement in the passing game this last month has just been comical. Do you know? Take a guess. What is his seventeen-game pace uh, at running back from the last For month? Targets? Yeah, seventeen-game pace. Yeah. Targets is you're going to tell me something silly like 150. It's no, a, it's going to be higher. No, it's 150 target pace. That's a running back. Um, yeah, that's not going to keep happening. That's, that's winning no, football. No. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people that believe Devontae Adams will be on the New York Jets next year. A lot of people. And so that, mm. that'll that be another discussion mm. to be had because – Soften up the running for him, but it'll take away a ton of those targets. Devon Achan, 14 for 107. Five targets, got into the end zone. I'll be very curious where Devon Achan goes next yep. year in drafts. I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking second round. Sounds about right. And then Khalil Herbert finished strong the last couple of weeks. Jonathan Taylor back into the end zone. So there's your studs for week 17. I hope that the Bears – clarify running back for us this year like it was a it was a pretty muddy mess over this past off season yeah but it was foreman ended up getting the healthy scratch and it was yeah the the foreman i mean there is something off the field going on with foreman or a, a uh uh an argument between him and the team because there was some weird social posts and but anyways the, the point being you knew there'd be value there but you couldn't feel really confident as showed by the ADP of like Khalil Herbert was their first running back selected but he was a very very late round pick and he I mean he started okay then Foreman was great and then Khalil Herbert has been great the last couple of weeks so hopefully we know yeah hopefully year. they invest in a running back and 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 make it clear right now it looks like Khalil Herbert has one year left on his rookie deal so he's not paid much uh he wasn't a high draft pick so no, he was a sixth rounder We'll spend lots of time talking about prospective free agent running backs as well on the show over the next couple of months. At wide receiver, the league winners, the best fantasy scorers from for the playoff weeks. Yeah, we see you. 15 through 17, here's the fun. We see you. C.D. Lamb, number one, 23.7. What was that, Teddy? Was that 92? Yes, it was. Oh, man. Oh, I, I was, mama. I was pants off <laughs> screaming through the home. When that happened, because it looked like Dak, who I had the stack, I mean, it was, was going to get safetyed on the play, and suddenly CeeDee Lamb. You know what I love about CeeDee Lamb, Tyreek, Jefferson? There's only a handful of them. You can, you'd think that the defense could play defense against them, and they can't. And they were so smart with CeeDee this season. They move him around all the time. He goes into the slot. Nobody ends up shadowing him because of that. It just means that he can be targeted like crazy. Number two. Despite playing two-thirds of the games, Amari Cooper with the highest per-game average, even when you average it out over three games. Number three, Amon Ross St. Brown. Just, I mean, you should call him automatic St. Brown. Yeah. That's really what he is. And then George Pickens at number four. That's a funny one. It is. It's interesting, his Dude. involvement since they got rid of Matt Canada and then the Mason Rudolph. Well, the, the Mason Rudolph switch, uh, the – I really thought it would, you know, the two weeks ago, the huge game was like, yeah, Pickens is a elite athlete. This can happen. It's, but it's a blip, and then, then he basically did it again. And then number five, another fantasy football darling from the Rams. In fact, the two most valuable free agent pickups by far during the year. Yeah, include Kyron Williams, who we talked about, and number five here at wide receiver Puka Nakua, and. Talk about an off-season discussion that we're going to have. 
Puka Nakua versus Cooper Cup in mm. next year's draft. Oh my gosh! With the age and the injuries that Cooper Cup have has suffered, you saw another good game from Demarcus Robinson. The targets and the right. yardage was was there. You know, Puka tough to bring down. Great after the catch, physical, go to receiver. We did breaking also, rookie records. Just a you know a small little news blurb here that McVay confirmed he will be back next year. So. That's nice to get that, that right great. now because yeah. we – As in McVay will be back. Yes. Puka as well. But Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's Sean McVay where, like, if if they make some kind of playoff run or Super Bowl run, then it was going to be, oh, here we go again. Is Amazon going to get Sean McVay away? Is ESPN going to get McVay away? He's saying, nope, he'll be back. And I don't blame him. Puka finished <laughs> the season, if, if you want to look at it, the 17 weeks as the season – as the wide receiver six from a fifth That's round from an rookie. undrafted. I mean, you drafted him in our league, but you were in the minority. Yeah. He was one of the bigger free agent pickups. In fact, you know, when we look at things to remember, if you invested your fab early mm -hmm. on Kyron and Puka, you just you, get more bang for your buck in the beginning of the year. Yeah. And uh, you got to get it right because there were people that invested 100% of fab on Zach Evans, and there were people that. You know, invested oh, a lot of Marcado, baby. Yeah, fab on other players, but your potential output is the highest when you hit it early in the year. So week seventeen specifically, C D Adams, they had the monster games. Um, I did not stand a chance against Mike and Dynasty when my two receivers were uh this week. Tyler Lockett and Mike Evans is about nine points. Oof. And Mike's two receivers were C D Lamb and Zay Flowers, yeah. Zay Flowers, three for 106 and a touchdown. Just, just three. It was just one long bomb, but that's what? all you needed. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's it's nice to know that that's at least a possibility for Zay Flowers. The play was hilarious. It was a completely broken defense of Zay Flowers just running a go route on the outside, and uh, the, I don't know who rolled incorrectly, the corner of the safety, but Zay Flowers threw the hand up, and then, I mean, the talent had to win there at the end where uh, uh, he definitely could have got tackled, but he broke, I think, two defenders. Brandon Ayuk finishes as a wide good. receiver 12 on the year. Brandon Ayuk is very good. He's also about to get money. Sure. Uh, due to get paid. And then Amon Ra finished a wide receiver three. I'm going to mention a player I tried to – I jackknifed into my lineup to try to save me against injury and save me against Mike, Darius Slayton. I mean, it was the best, the best you could possibly do. Four for 106 and a touchdown, another deep bomb touchdown from Tyrod. You know, it seemed like Darius Slayton was a thing a couple of years ago, and yep, then he was right. completely worthless. And then all yeah, of a sudden the, – all The team – They just they, don't – The team turned on him. Yeah, they, they don't want him to be good. They don't want him it's to like, have the opportunity. It's but like he's Greg like, Dorch. Yeah, it's like, like, he's actually – he's just – he's pretty good. He's a pretty good wide he's, receiver. He's going to end the year uh, as their leading receiver. I mean, he, he is. He's – uh, sitting at 45 for 708 and 3. Well, and he plays against Philly next if you're in week 18. So, yeah. Congrats. Yeah, he had 740 sure. and 8 as a rookie. So, he's got long speed and the ability to be a top tier receiver. Just teams don't like it. I don't know. Wandale looked all right mm -hmm. in the uh, final game of the year. Bo Melton. Yeah. What? From anonymity what? from the practice squad to 6 for 105 and a touchdown. <laughs> Oh, Bo. Bo Melton plays for the Packers, in case you're yeah, curious. Oh, I'm sure many people don't realize. And was a seventh-round pick. I mean, think about all the names. Malik Heath mm -hmm. and Dontavian Wicks and now Bo Melton. And Toure. And Toure. And so you've had, like, tons of these youngsters coming through. and They have, like, no veteran wide receiver, and they've got a really nice wide receiver. I mean, bro. and Jaden Reed's a rookie, too. Yeah. Um. All right, tight ends, your playoff league winners at the tight end position, weeks 15 through 17. You ready? Let's go. David Njoku, number one, 16.4 a game. Someone reminded me on Twitter this past week that Travis Kelsey did not have his first number one overall season until he was 27 years old. That is David Njoku's age. What? Are you calling oh, David Njoku? The next Travis Kelsey. Ah, uh, maybe. Because I believe you said Trey McBride wrong. 
I like David Njoku's future. I do. Is that – he was 27? That's – you can vet it. You can vet it. I believe Travis Kelsey was 27 when he had his first tight end one season. Possibly. I mean, it was – because he had lost his rookie year. I believe that was an ACL. And then he was just really solid for three years, 805, 805, 1,104. It was, the touchdown jump did happen in his it was fifth his, year. His Kelsey's fourth year, I believe, is when he was uh, – oh, because he had the entire yeah. missed season. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things where, like, look, if you break the season down from weeks, what, six on? Yeah, yeah, six on David Njoku is the number one number one tight end. That's a long time ago, and it and it wasn't by a little bit. It wasn't like he was, you know, okay or you know he had one big blow up game that just the truth. You know, we'll have the our truth series coming up here in a couple of weeks, taking a look at um, the not just how these players finished, but how did they perform for fantasy? Are they reliable or not? He was an every week must start um, stud just and. The most targets in that span, not just Purdue. He wasn't just like some touchdown scorer that lucked his way there. He has six touchdowns. I mean, that's not crazy for a tight end. 105 targets from week six on. So we'll see what – I mean, there's a lot of question marks in the offense in yeah, Cleveland. The, yeah, there will be. So <laughs> – And Mike, the will, Mike will eat it up. The, the problem is I, I realize like – They have you know, no I, choice. I, I, I wanted I wanted Flacco to make this thing hard, win a Super Bowl, and then be like, how do you move on? But they, they literally can't afford Correct. Flacco. Flacco's played his way into a contract. Like he, if he wants to play football next year, someone will pay him to play football and, and not the veteran minimum. Um, and you know what team can't afford to do that? Yeah. The team that has all their money tied up into Deshaun Watson. The target leaders at tight end this year, Evan Ingram is number one on the season at 130. Hawkinson at 127. Njoku at 123. Kelsey is fourth. Kelsey will be another big discussion. Yeah, it happens. It happens to everyone. Number two behind Njoku over the final three weeks. Mike started the week of the yeah, last baby. week. Jawan Johnson. Woo! Boy, it was not the start or the middle that you wanted for Jawan Johnson. We saw this potential early in the off off season, and it just it wasn't his time yet, Mike. I guess he needed to. Uh, it was sit in the cocoon a little longer. It was a strange ride for Jawan after the the breakout of last year, the excitement of the beat reporters for for Jawan through training camp. I mean, and then nothingness for three weeks. Then he gets hurt for a month or so. So the I mean, the, the takeaway <laughs> here, I don't know what you can oh, at. I'm sorry. I just saw Deshaun Watson's dead cap oh. for next year. Uh, With, what would it be if they were to cut $200 him? million. Dollars. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So they are not. the. But Jawan, big, big The nice thing for Jawan set. Johnson is that if he's been sitting at the back of your dynasty bench, there's at least some renewed optimism where it felt like, in the middle of the season, it was, why am I even holding on to Juwan Johnson right now? Sam Laporta was three. Isaiah Likely, four. Tucker Craft was five. Uh, I did not read I, uh, Travis Kelsey's name. Right. and Or or the tight end one, Trey, uh, McBride. The tight end one. Yeah. Your tight end one. Yeah. No, the. In your the, heart. In yeah, your the heart. tight end one. The. Uh, yeah, McBride was a little disappointing over, it was. over the last three weeks. It was, especially in that, the game against the Eagles. It was like. Throw the ball to McBride. What are we doing? But, yeah, I mean, it, Kyler it, had a good game. Yeah, he was the tight end twenty six and fourteen the last two weeks after his little run of of success. That'll be an interesting one too. If Arizona mm -hmm. ends up with, um, I think they're going to end up with neighbors. Uh, so another big wide receiver added to the mix. And I don't know if you saw this video of Hollywood Brown. Did you see him say he traded himself in fantasy early yeah, early in I the did. year? Oh, for real? Yeah, he was he was on like a, a internet chat. I don't know if it was Twitch or something. But he's like, he's like early in the year. He's like, I'm not going to get the ball in this offense, and he traded himself. <laughs> wow! Inside information. I know. Maybe be a little public <laughs> next time, Hollywood. So, yeah, Kelsey was on the losing side of both of our main league title games. If you think about that, right? Uh, wasn't able to be the kind of powerhouse that we came to expect, have come to expect, and he definitely lost a step this That's year. Interesting. The, sorry to go back to the Hollywood Brown. Yeah. I mean, if he felt that way, I mean, he wasn't, you know, necessarily incorrect. But if you have that 
feeling, and that's now what you think about that coaching staff. But you're gonna, yes, they could franchise him, but you're gonna, think, you won't, you're gonna think pretty strong about do I re-sign here or do I go to someone where maybe I make even a little bit less money. The the opinion all through the year was the Cardinals are going to bring Hollywood Brown back, yeah. and it doesn't make sense in this offense. This offense is built around physical, large, wide receivers, not the kind of skill set that Hollywood Brown brings. It was obvious that he wasn't getting targeted in the way that they they drew up the game plan, the way that these uh, the offensive sets were built. It, it's just I don't think it's a fit. If the Cardinals spend that money there, it's a waste of money in my opinion because – you know, you've got a lot of needs on that offense. So, personally, I hope he doesn't come back. Uh, before we move on from Travis Kelsey, I'm just looking at um, the fantasy playoffs and where he ranked through those three weeks. Oh, no. I want to play a little game. It's called Who Had More Fantasy Points <laughs> During the Fantasy a, Playoffs? Do we have the button? I want to play a game. All right. Who had more fantasy points during the fantasy playoffs? Uh, disappointment, Jake Ferguson oh, or Travis Kelsey? Oh, that's Ferguson. That is. That is. Yeah. How about TJ Hawkinson, who did not play a week? He was very injured. He was injured. Or Travis Kelsey? I'm guessing two weeks of Hawk. Two weeks of Hawk, yes. <laughs> outscored Travis Kelsey through these playoffs. We knew this day would come, and it doesn't make it feel any better. Kyle Pitts. The bust of busts who – Oh, had, no, he had a little – he had a, at least a touchdown. He had a touchdown. He had a little burst. All right. Okay, well, let's make it a little harder. So it yeah. is Pitts. It is Pitts. Oh, my gosh. Logan Thomas or no. Travis Kelsey no. for the fantasy no. playoffs? No. I know I know. Logan Thomas had a touchdown. No. Yeah, it's Logan Thomas. No. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wait, we got more? Let's get a little harder. <laughs> oh, let's go. <laughs> harder than Logan? Tyler Conklin oh my for the gosh. Jets with backup no. quarterbacks or Patrick Mahomes' favorite target, Travis Kelsey. <laughs> conk. Conk, conk, baby. All right. How about no! Lucas Kroll? Oh. If you know who Lucas Kroll is. Oh, baby, Denver, Denver Broncos? Yeah. yeah. Isn't that a type of, like, a fish? Kroll? Oh, that's Krill. Go on. Uh, it is It is Lucas Kroll. How about Johnny Munt? <laughs> Johnny <laughs> Munt. Is this just like any tight end who yeah, had a touchdown? You basically. outscored Kelsey? Yeah. Kelsey's Kel 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 pace he over the last three weeks was 73 for 498 and zero. Yeah, he was the wide receiver 26 through the fantasy playoffs. Oh, man. So Or tight end. T yes, tight end. So that that's, uh, that's not – He's going to end the year great. at number two because of the way he started. Because the first, you know, seven weeks of the year, he was on pace for the normal Kelsey – 136 for 1,511. I feel like... But from that point on... I feel it, like something changed in his life. Sure. Here's what I was going to say, though. I think, based off of this year, you either have Kelsey retire or, he, or he's going to be incredible next year. Like, he, he recommits... That's the kind of thing I need to hear to trade him properly in Dynasty. He, I mean, this, this is just all you know, shooting from the hip, from the gut of like, when you have an embarrassing season like this and the Chiefs could still win the Super Bowl. Like, they have a roster that it, they could figure it out. They could also get bounced in their very first game mm -hmm. and just be thoroughly embarrassed for the Mahomes era. And I feel like if that happens and Kelsey does come back, he's going to be... Do you think him and Mahomes will ever, ever, ever get <laughs> back together? I don't know at this point. Yeah. Oof, oof. Tri tight end is always a good time, but maybe we're reaching the point where we don't see. Oh, we've we've got a new cast of characters now. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think Laporta is going to be the number one yeah, tight end I, in I next year's draft. I don't disagree. Really, I yeah. do. Yeah, and I think um, I don't think there's going to be one going in the first round. Maybe not the second round. I think we may we may be at a different stage for the tight end position. But well, I mean, it's hard because you can believe that Kelsey's going to. Bounce back, maybe. But I don't believe with a first or second round pick. Right. So yeah, yeah. that's going to I be, don't believe that's strong. I mean, he could end up being a nice gamble for a dynasty team that's going for it, considering how hard it is to get a contributor every week. But 
That's a man trying to talk up his trade value. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. I mean, I I, uh, I can always tell when Andy's oh, being man. personal on these players he really <laughs> likes because he's sneaking them in his lineup. Or that yeah, was, you see me. Yeah, you know, I I see who I, I see and I see and I you, see this right hey, here. Hey, if you got Travis Kelsey in your dynasty team, you should be doing the exact same yeah. thing. Talk him up. All right. Well, you scal- Get out. scoundrels. <laughs> it's scoundrel time. We're gonna right. we're gonna talk some quick waiver wire, but at the top, I want to remind people. We have the waiver wire rankings on the website for the week 18 players, the fantasyfootballers.com. Click the waiver wire rankings, but we'll jump in right now. Put me in, coach. All right. Talk about running back pickups. I think we all have the number one waiver wire pickup of the week as Elijah Mitchell. Yes, 100%. It, right now, it looks like Christian McCaffrey, not, I mean, we don't know for sure, but. That he's, no, he's going to be out. Yeah, I think so they've officially said that. Oh, has it been officially? Or at least not from the team, but we've had. Oh, he's yeah, out. The he's expectation gonna, is that he's he's he does not play. Yeah. Yes. And so with with that truth, then you've got to have Elijah Mitchell as, as the number one. I mean, this is obviously it's the last week. There's nothing to save on to here. So when you're like, how much do I spend in Fab for anyone? <laughs> it's all of it. Uh-huh. You should not finish this week with a dollar left in, in Fab. The other running backs to pay attention to, Zamir White, Khalil Herbert. Justice Hill after last week's Dude, performance. That was wild. Jamal Williams in place of Kamara. Mm-hmm. And um, there you go. Yeah, I mean, that's the big list. <laughs> the The nastiest of nasty boys uh, will be like, do you think it's all Elijah Mitchell or does Jordan Mason work into the San Francisco offense? I'm I'm fine grabbing Jordan Mason as well. I mean, you're you're going to have see how the week progresses. Yeah, if if news comes out, but it will be Elijah Mitchell ahead of Jordan yes. Mason. Yes, and then the the last one I'll mention it because look, Baltimore is done. Right, Baltimore has nothing to play for. They are locked into the number one seed. <laughs> and I agree, dude. Oh, that's it's funny. gonna it, yeah. That's a it, week eighteen it, it, play. This is, this is what you get. That's right. If you are <laughs> if you are doing your championship. In the final week of the NFL season, this is what you get. Melvin Gordon w- might be the starting running back for the Baltimore Ravens. That is a great point. Wide receivers, the Dorch in Arizona getting opportunity. Seven for 82. He's a good player. Can't wait for them to bench him again. Demarcus Robinson. Just keeps getting it Six done. for 92. Uh, also had an end zone target he didn't end up with in this one. Darius Slayton with Tyrod Taylor. He yeah, gets Slayton's got to be way up there. He's, he gets deep shots. Um, Trey Palmer for for Tampa got back into the end zone. He's a good he's a good player to pay attention to in dynasty leagues at this point. Yeah, that's fair. with Evans departing, and then um, you know Bo Melton. People want to talk about Bo Melton. Yeah, is he the Jaden Reed could be gone next that, week? That was it. Does he move into Jaden Reed's opportunities? Uh, it I mean, seems like it. You'll have to see what the health is of uh, Wicks. Didn't Wicks. play last week. Yeah, but is Dontavian Wicks back this week in that move? Bo Melton right back down rookie the, roulette back down the depth chart so it's it's something to pay attention to hey, and we'll see what Christian Watson's status is as well at the tight end position pay attention to well Juwan Johnson yeah mm-hmm. with the big week uh that would be a heavy fab spin for me if I needed a tight end against Atlanta in the final week of the season uh what is the current uh, let me see if Bucks lose, winner of the game is NFC South champ. So Falcons Saints, they're playing for it. Yes. So Buccaneers, if they lose, it'll be the winner of the Falcon Saints game. So Juwan's in play. Tucker Craft, um the Green Bay Packers need to win as well. Um that's the, they're playing for something and the Chicago matchup is pretty good for tight ends. Tucker Craft has been okay. Yeah. If if, if Jaden Reed isn't there, you know, you Rookie roulette, but I'd, right, right, I'd right. play the tight end. Yep. Packers win, they're in. Defenses for the final week of the year, you want ones that are motivated. And so we'll get into more of the motivation tomorrow as well, but, you know, Tampa Bay, they're yep. playing for something and they're playing against Carolina. So yep. that is very valuable. Um, Jacksonville plays Tennessee. That would be one to pay attention to with Will Levis leaving again, Ryan Tannehill, and the, uh, the remains of... Derrick oh, Henry. <laughs> the uh, the old no amount of snow can save this <laughs> decline. Henry versus Houston. Who? <sighs> the beginning of the year we thought that that would be, yeah, incredible. But it was 
It was not. It was not. Yeah, Houston has taken just incredible steps forward as a franchise. Yeah, the, I mean they might. I mean, have, if they win this it, week, they're in the playoff. They genuinely have a a strong possibility of having the offensive rookie of the year mm -hmm. and the defensive rookie yeah, of the year. Yeah, I was going to say, did I mean Arizona? They better hit on that. Houston Texans pick this year, which is now going to end up in the teens, because bypassing Will Anderson may, yeah, look really, really dumb in about two years. It already looks bad, but you could feel catastrophic. All right, like I said, all the way over our. Will you, will you, will you. Try that again, Jason. Why don't you say it? Oh, you don't want me to say it, but the <laughs> waiver, the wire, waiver rankings? <laughs> wire rankings are <laughs> on <laughs> our website. Uh, you can you can go and see. The fab spins, the orders, more players than we mentioned today and compare them to who's available in your league. And even though you're playing on week 18 and you should update your league, we are here for you. We, we're putting the research in. We want to make sure you know we got your back and we're going to get your title this week. Full stream ahead. The Cardinals get the Texans pick, which is currently 17th. Hmm. Hmm. From from projected number one or number two overall pick to seventeen, huh? Some good work, Houston. Yeah. All right. Streaming quarterback options. I'll go with Baker. Must win game against Carolina. He looked bad in the first half. And then he turned it on yet again. Uh almost came back in that game. He's been top twelve three or four weeks. He's been a top five fantasy performer. So if you're in it, if you're in week eighteen. Baker is the perfect guy sure. to get you a title. Yeah. No, I, I, I like it. Um, Mike, why don't you go next? All right, I'll go. Uh, I think Jason's guy, we'll, we'll talk about that, should be the guy to go to. But Tyrod Taylor gets to play Philly. Taylor coming off of a an excellent production game, and Philly's that team. Like, he runs the football, too. He, He's well He runs. Up. I mean, and, and Kyler Murray had looked atrocious for weeks at a time. Plays Philadelphia. Comes through with, I mean, a big win for the team and a huge fantasy performance. So I'm I'm taking Tyrod if you are in the mucky muck. And my streaming advice is pick up Joe Baker <laughs> or pick up Tyrod Flacco. Uh, your guys' streaming options alongside Joe Flacco. I would put Joe Flacco on my roster first. He's shockingly still available in leagues. Maybe dropped a lot this last week because yes. of the matchup. Um, he's been on fire. Now, they're not playing for anything. They're locked. So we don't know for sure he's going to play this week. But with, you know. Or look play at, a whole game. Yeah, look at your look at your waivers and who's available. I would pick him up because I think we'll have, you know, news by the end of the week. And I'm not worried about, you know, if they bench him uh, in the fourth, he probably had a good game already. Or there's there's there, He had the good game without Cooper, but there's no way that Cooper plays this week. That's fair. So, yeah, and you need to be prepared with everybody this week that they could sit. Absolutely. That is going to do it for today's episode. Congratulations. Congrats to everybody out there. One final reminder, shopballers.com for your Foot Clan title swag, shirts, hoodies, mugs. All the, I mean, I found myself wanting to buy everything that existed for champions over the weekend. Winning will do that. And um, including the ring I already purchased and the new plaque for this fine trophy. Man. and. That's good work, champ. Uh, yeah, nice job, champ. So uh, on that note. Yeah, we got to get this in the let's, camera. Uh, let's go ahead and switch that camera <laughs> angle. Goodbye, everybody. Hey, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you all the rest of the week, too. Goodbye. Whee! Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. <laughs>